Working with Radiance. This video is another exploration from strategies for deploying virtual representations of the built environment. Radiance is, for many, a go-to tool for visual simulation. One can do many things with Radiance, in part because there are hundreds of permutations of directives. ESPR is based on a superset data model, which includes thermal, electrical, fluid flow, and visual entities. The E2R module of ESP translates ESPR models and drives Radiance tools to accomplish a range of common tasks. This video is a brief exploration of visual assessment tasks on an ESPR model of a portion of an office building. This model includes a dozen small offices, adjacent passages, and associated ceiling voids. It has sufficient resolution to support a number of visual assessments, such as renderings for clients. We can also adjust the view angle, angle to get an elevation view. And Radiance has an option that effectively allows us to remove the facade without disturbing the light distribution inside. Let's get started. So, in the project manager, we have this ESPR model of the office loaded, and we're going to review its composition briefly. Typical room has in it space for a couple of people, some furniture, some fittings, uh, overhangs on the south facing, quite a large area of glazing. And there are six offices on each level. They are essentially the same, but there are different kind of controls being applied to each one. And what we'd like to do is do a visualization on this model. So we choose color rendered. It's going to ask us for a scene file name. I've called it dozen offices. And the E2R module starts up. It's been passed the name of the ESPR model. It loads it up and we would like to do an interactive creation of the Radiance model. We've got a number of different kinds of scenes that we can create. Internal, external, glare calculations, daylight factors, many other things, but basically this time let's just start with a simple external image. And it's come up with a root name for this particular session. We can document it if we want to. And then when do we want to be looking at things? Um, if we choose sometime in the spring where we could get a decent amount of light inside, or how about a winter afternoon. Another few questions here. How fine do we want the surface textures to be resolved? Where's the ground plane going to fit? Well, this is a mid-level in a building, so let's make it several meters above the ground so that it's not confused with the ground plane that Radiance provides. So, it's read the ESPR model and uh, created a number of different files that Radiance uses. And here's the main interface where we can go in and one of our first tasks will be to set a, a viewpoint for our scene and create a new view. Give it a name. So it's picked up the current viewing parameters there and converted them into the kind of language that um, Radiance likes. There are also some things about view angles and whatnot. So let's see what it, that is like. Um, there are scene parameter options, which I'd like to say before we go off and melt the computer for a while. And so there is image quality and detail level. Let's bump the detail level up high. 
the moment there are still diffuse reflections, just one reflection inside. Later on, we might make that a bit more. But the resolution at the moment is only going to generate an image 500 wide, so let's make that 1,000 pixels wide. And um, let's turn on penumbras, and that's probably pretty much what we need, so let's save that information, and we confirm the file name. And so let's go and do a test rendering of the scene that's been created. At the moment, there are two cores available for doing the rendering. And so we'll pick that view that we created. We'll have a standard color. We don't need a, any Lux contours at the moment. And rather than sequence, let's do a single time instance. It will pick up the seasonal information that we already decided. We've got screener file. Let's go with screen. And essentially it pulls up our previewer that gradually increases the rendering resolution, which is the way Radiance behaves. And you can see it's refining the image. And there's a commands that you can type in on the lower portion of that preview. For example, E minus 1 changes the exposure down a full stop. E1 normalizes it back again and it carries on refining. So that proves that that model will refine and could produce a viable image. So there's another other set of commands, view, V for viewpoint. And so that's the per particular numbers at the moment. There's a directional vector and there's a size. So let's try changing that. We can go to 7 degrees wide and 4 degrees high and leave everything the same. And we see that it's starting over again with a new set of viewing parameters. So the standard commands that you would use in um, the preview application will still apply. Now, what we'd like to do is type V again and let's change our viewpoint. Let's move to a view straight in at the elevation on the south side. And we want to change the viewing vector so that y is a 1 and the others are 0. And that will put us perpendicular to that face. We might change that horizontal and vertical size. 20 degrees wide, 10 degrees vertical. And ask it to do this again. So it's now re-rendering with this new viewpoint. And the resolution will gradually increase. Again, we've proved what we want. If we type in the word view and then space and then a file name, then it will save the current viewing parameters. So we're saving it to front.view. This will come in handy later on. Now, there's another option here where we can cut the plane that we're looking at. And if we cut it just past the facade, we can see inside. And so uh, we leave everything else the same and we change this clipping. If we're, the, we're viewing it 60 meters away, if we make it 60.1, we're just on the other side of the facade. And then that will allow us to cut away the facade and see what's happening inside. And that could be quite a useful area for rendering. It has not changed how light bounces around inside. And the resolution creeps up. And we would like to save this view front cut. Completes the preview tasks. Now, we want to change parameter options here. If we click Diffuse Daylight, that gives us two bounces, which is much better. 1,000 pixels is fine. High level of detail and light variability is fine. Now, we've got 
we want to import the viewpoints that we just created and these will be found in these particular files viewfront cut and front.view so let's go into scene viewpoints import an rview viewing file and my task is to provide the name of one of those files. I will give it a name and we've updated our viewing to match that. We double check these various parameters. If we like those, then we can save that viewing information. I'd like to also import that other view that we created. And I type its name in. And I give it a name. Now, did we get everything? Ah, I don't see that the clipping information has been read in. It's got the high points fine. Let's just type in the numbers again for this. So 60.1 is just slightly inside the facade. And some hundred meters beyond is fine for the other clipping plane. So with that done, we can save the viewing information. So let's render that scene. Let's choose the cut version. So standard color, single time instance, Let's just check on the screen to see that that is what we were asking for. So the preview is a very good thing to just check that all of the information is going all right. And in fact, this looks like it's going to be a reasonable one. So we can go back and ask to re-render the scene, but this time place the information into an image file, and then it will have the full resolution that's beyond what the preview application can provide us with. And so this will chunk away because we've got a couple of cores. What you see is the familiar chatter with frame one, two, three, four. So it's parsing the information up and proceeding along. Now I've speeded this section up a little bit. We will get to somewhat more than a million rays at the end of the process before we have something to see. So this is a standard feedback from Radiance as it's progressing. And here is our viewing of the file that was just created, and that's we're now able to see much more clearly what's going on inside of the space. So let's quit that. How about an internal view? Well, let's save this scene information first, and then let's add a new scene. And what we'd like to do in this scene is deal with internal images. So it will drive radiance in a slightly different way than for an external image. And it will create a new set of files. And we'd like to say which room we're going to be focusing in on. So there's a room that says radiator at facade. Let's pick that one. And I accept the information that's provided. I could add some more notes if I wanted to. Let's pick noon on a spring day carry on with high level and reset the ground plane to three meters below. And it rereads the data model in, creates things. Now we would like to set some viewpoints in. And so the viewpoint is again within this that radiator at facade room. 
I'd like to create a new view. Because this is an inside view, I have some options that I don't see normally. So I give the view a name. Imagine you might have a dozen different pre-cooked views that, that you want to use for some analysis. So here's the plan view of that particular room, and I'd like to put the viewpoint somewhere along this right wall with a fairly wide angle. Now I've already figured out where that is in space, and I'll just put in the X, Y, and Z for that. Okay, so there's an angle that has indicator that's on there, but I want to change the direction, so I will put in the azimuth and elevation information for that. I want it facing a little off of west, so I'll make it 280 degrees, and I don't need to be looking up or down, just horizontally. And there's the view, all right. I'd like to widen things out. How about something like 110 degrees? It's up to you what you make it, um, and I probably need maybe about 80 degrees um, on the vertical angle to pick up things. Okay, so uh, let's save that viewing information and render the scene. Ah, before we do that, let's double check the scene parameter options. Okay, yes, I need to reset that later on when I go to fine, but for the initial rendering, oh, this will be all right. So standard color, single time instance on the screen. Okay, reset the exposure inside. Yeah, I'm getting uh, a bit of view to the outside as well as to the inside. So that looks like it's going to be a reasonable view. And so I'll quit that. I'll go back to the scene parameter options and update those um, for purposes of a realistic rendering. So I want the diffuse reflections sorted out. Turn on the penumbras. Ah, that should just about do it, so let's save that. and re-render the scene. This time I will choose the file option and that will progress in the background. In this particular case um, I'm just showing you what happens if there's only one core available. You get this kind of chatter coming out in the background window. It's a good idea always to see the background window because there are warnings and error messages that will pop up there and you can also see the progress of the work. And that's our view inside and we can see um, a reflection of the glass on the inside uh, partition as well as a bit on the outside. So that's an example of using radiance for an inside rendering.